Hosea. So if you would please open up to Hosea. And we're reading in uh, chapter 2. Last week we made it all the way to chapter 2, verse 13. And so we're going to start with verse 14. Therefore, behold, I will allure her, will bring her into the wilderness and speak comfort to her. I will give her her vineyards from there and the valley of Acre as a door of hope. She shall sing there as in the days of her youth, as in the day when she came up from the land of Egypt. Who's talking here? It's God. God is talking, and who's he talking about? He's talking about Israel. I love the fact that he uses the word allure. I will allure her. And, and even though this is about Israel, it's also about us. It's whatever we have going in on in our lives, and sometimes we wander away from God. And it breaks his heart. But he is so good and so loving and so compassionate that he just reaches down. And you know, it's, it uses the word alert. It doesn't say force. It doesn't even say draw. It, it doesn't say uh, drag. I will drag her. You know, God doesn't, we're not puppets. We're not puppets on a string. We have free will. We have a choice. Are we going to follow him or not? And he's talking to Israel here, but he's also talking to us. Are you going to follow me or not? And if not, he says, fine, I will allure you. Isn't that a neat word? And once you've tasted and seen that the Lord is good, and how sweet it is to know him, and you step away, and you deprive yourself of him, Who's, who's hurting whom here? You know, when I don't spend time with the Lord, and things go wrong in the day, and I don't handle it well, there's a good reason why. And then you do spend time with the Lord, things still go wrong, right? <laughs> Does that not happen? But, but you have this deep abiding peace. And possibly he's even given you a verse in the morning before you head out the door. Have you ever had that happen? You know, I talk about spending time with God. It doesn't mean you have to get all holy and pull yourself up in a closet somewhere and pray for an hour and, and read chapter after chapter after chapter of the Bible. It might just be one little verse. And I have had God speak to me with one little verse that I carry with me in my heart for the remainder of the day. And uh, it's amazing the difference it makes when we take that time and spend with him. He allures us. Do you have the word? I do. Yeah. Um, powerfully attracting or charming to tempt. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So it's like he dangles the carrot. <laughs> do you want to come with me? Come on, it's going to be good if you just mm. surrender. And we are so prideful. We're just like Israel. We look at Israel and think, oh, those goofballs. Why can't they just do what God says? But the reality is we're not much different. We're just as stiff-necked and stubborn as the Israelites. And we talked last week about Gomer. She's a prostitute. And, you know, shame on her. Shame on Gomer. How dare she carry on like that when she has such a good husband? Well... Could it be that we too have the tendency to prostitute ourselves to the world? God the Father is wants to be our husband, as we're going to read. He he wants a close, loving relationship, as if he were our husband. We are the bride of Christ, are we not? If we have trusted in Christ alone. And, and his heart's desire is that we would walk in fellowship with him. Not that we'd be perfect. Uh, raise your hand if you're perfect here. Not one of us is. We know all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. That is why we have our dependence upon him. It's why we need him. And then it talks here about the Valley of Acre. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but... 
he says, you know what the valley of acre is? It's the valley of trouble. Are you in the valley of trouble? I don't know what's going on in all your lives, but I would assume that there are a whole lot of problems that are represented in a room this size. I know that you all came here with your valley of trouble. But what does it say he's going to give you for your valley of trouble? You read it. It's in your Bibles. He's going to turn it into a door of hope. Valleys are not fun places to be. We talked about that last weekend. You know, we were at a ladies' retreat where there was so much amazing stuff going on. And you've all you know, been to different conferences and different things, and you go and you come back all excited. But, you know, we talked about the reality was that we were going to come down to the valley. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a valley right now, think about it. What is in the valley? There's the mountaintop. There's snow on the mountaintop. What happens to the snow? It melts. And where does it go? It runs down into the valley. And it waters our souls. This book, ladies, right here, is the living water. And Jesus says, He who thirsts, come after me. And you'll never thirst again. It's that spiritual thirst. That It's that part of us, that God-shaped vacuum, that longs to know him. And he says, come to the valley. What is it? The Psalm 23 the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. Do you want to be restored? Then lie down in the valley next to the living water and let him heal you. Whether it's physical, emotional, spiritual, he's alluring you tonight. He's calling you back. He says, won't you come? Come through that door of hope. Underline that. You know, when we come to Christ, we have joy. We have, it's like that honeymoon period. You know, it's like, woohoo, oh, I like this. And, and God speaks to you, and you're, you're so excited, and you're reading the Bible, and you can't get enough of it. And it's just, you're, it's like you're drinking water out of, out of a fire hose. You ever been there? I know you have. Um, it's like, oh, God, this is so exciting. So it says, she shall sing there. We, we, the bride of Christ even, will sing as in the days of our youth, the days when we first came to know Jesus. You know, it says in Psalm 51, 12, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. If you've never experienced the joy of your salvation, you can start tonight. And then it goes on and it says, And give me a willing spirit, Lord, to obey you. You know, when we walk in obedience, joy comes. When we walk in disobedience, we're not joyful. I'm going to confess, I have been known in the past to, to speak. You know, like, you know you're going just a little bit over. Does anyone else do that? <laughs> yeah, we were in, on the California freeway. Raise your hand if you've been on the California freeway. I was following this woman right here. She's speeding, and I don't want to speed. I don't want a ticket. I said, she called me, and she said, you need to keep up. Mickey was there. You need to keep up. And I, I, what did I say? <laughs> no, I could go she's speed. speeding. I and and Brenda said, Brenda said I would get a ticket for slowing up traffic. I'm going to speed limit. So I mean, I'm from Idaho. I'm from Idaho. <laughs> but anyway, when you speed, Wait, yeah, or, you beat me there anyway. You still I still did because anyway. I had a different. I had Siri. Yeah. <laughs> Siri. That's not always a good thing. No, but, no, um, but have you noticed that when you're doing something that's wrong, like speeding, 
You're watching <laughs> in the rear view mirror. You're looking to the left, you're looking to the right. It's like something. Yeah, you know, you know I've got to hurry. I've got to hurry. Lord, I know you understand. I'm going to be late for church. So you understand. So I this is okay. It, and, uh, but, but when you, and you're tense and you're uncomfortable. But when you know you're doing everything okay, and you do see a police officer, isn't it a good feeling? And just kind of... Oh, especially when the cops are coming over. Our very countenance. 